Hello, everyone. I'd like to call this special meeting uh, to order for November 20th at 3.30 p.m. Council, any additions or deletions to today's agenda? Administration? No. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Councilor Race. I'll move to adopt special meeting of council. Thank you, Councilor Race. Council, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Hello, everyone. I'd like to call this special meeting. Uh, to order for November 20th at 3.30 p.m. Sand Council, any additions or deletions to today's agenda? Sandra, if we can get you to uh, work on your audio, we're no, getting feedback. Race. We believe it's from you. Uh, move to adopt special meeting council. Thank you, Councilor Race. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Wendy, you might have an extra tab open with the stream. Uh, for the technical difficulty in the replay of sounds, but everything seems to be fixed. We've adopted the agenda. Uh, our first and only action item is the temporary mandatory mask and face covering bylaw 1151 CAO Wilson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, just a short introduction um, to this item. Uh, earlier this week, council discussed the temporary mandatory mask and face covering bylaw. Uh, and a special meeting was called uh, with preparation Sorry, this, this took place at the EAC meeting earlier this week. Uh, preparation of the bylaw had been underway. Um, at this time, I would turn this over to uh, Council for discussion of the contents within the bylaw and any further direction. Thank you, CEO Olson. Uh, Council, Councilor Magoo. Uh, I would like to make a motion, Your Worship. Absolutely. Just get it down here, please. I'd like to move that council adopt the first reading. I'd like to move that council give the first reading of the temporary mandatory mask and face coverings bylaw number 1151. And if I may, Your Worship. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, you know, this was certainly, this was an item that we initially sort of discussed back in August when the concept was floated by a number of communities. Uh, unfortunately, due to family medical concerns, I wasn't there for that initial discussion, although I supported the will of council moving forward. Uh, I thought it was a judicious decision at that point to uh, deal with the issue as we had in the, the in-between months. That being said, I think we've definitely seen a change in the circumstances and the context uh, surrounding not only our conditions here in Hinton, but provincially, nationally, and in fact, internationally. Um, this certainly doesn't come forward without a great deal of thought or consideration. There are people who have different positions on this issue. I appreciate everybody who's given their thoughts on this issue. I've, I've certainly considered them. Um, that being said, on the you know, given the best medical advice we have at this point, uh, advice from our medical experts at the provincial and federal levels, uh, and also so much public feedback in support, uh, asking council to push this forward. Uh, I make this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lagoon. Council, we have a motion on the floor for first reading. Councilor Nelson. I have a question. If we're to be proposing amendments, is it recommended that we do them uh, prior to first reading or after first reading? Thank you, Councilor Nelson. C.A. Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, procedurally, uh, Council must give first reading to the bylaw and then propose amendments after that point. And for then 
uh, proceed with further readings if they desire. Thank you. Thank you, CEO Olson. With that, Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further uh, debate or questions? And seeing none, I'll call to question that Council give first reading of temporary mandatory mask and face covering by law 1151. All those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Council, uh, Council Magoon. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to bring forward uh, a potential amendment uh, for Council's discussion. I'll make the amendment and then see how it goes. I'd like to <clears throat> propose an amendment that section 4.1.1, you bet you wouldn't need no problem. So if I may, uh, Councilor Magoon, if, if I can go to administration, I just want to clarify, I think we have to put second reading on the floor first and then we make amendments to the second reading. So if somebody would like to put second reading. Or... Uh, just to clarify, Mayor Michaels, before calling second reading, the chair will request any amendments. <clears throat> okay. Okay, then we're good. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, is it okay yeah. for me to proceed Absolutely. with the amendment? Thank you. Uh, when you're okay? I'm just going to put this up down here. Perfect. So it's not okay. That's section 4.1.1 read. Persons under nine, and then bracket nine, years of age. And then if I may speak to that, Your Worship. Um, Having, having experienced what's going on in schools right now uh, with students and what the government has requested and mandated of students, um, currently students who are in grades four and up uh, are mandated to be masked uh, when they're spending you know, eight hours in a singular institution with others. So in this case, also understanding the limitations of trying to, as many of us being parents have experienced, try to wrangle two-year-olds with masks, certainly isn't, I think, always the most realistic. Uh, so we, you know, as much as possible, I'm looking to try and align provincial expectations with our own, because that has definitely been a concern I've heard in the, in the community. People, they get frustrated easily when the rules are different in different places. Uh, and so that's simply an attempt to align what's happening at the provincial level with what we're trying to bring in here. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Uh, Councilor Nelson. Yeah, although I'd actually be in support of uh, of an amendment to change the age, um, to me, nine is too high. Um, if you look at all the extracurriculars that students are involved in, their school is a very controlled cohort and controlled scenario. But when you start taking them out of schools and going into places like hockey teams and dance and gymnastics uh, and just usual kids playing out, uh, I I think nine is too old. Um, I I would entertain something younger older than two, but uh, I believe nine is too old and it allows too much uh, opportunity for, for kids to ultimately bring it back into their schools again, which is to me the most important thing about all these bylaws. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. I'm Councillor Wall and Councillor Haas. Yeah, before I could consider a change to the age, I guess I wanted to ask and maybe kind of what the basis for the uh, the under two years of age was in the original bylaw. Thank you, uh, thank you Mayor Michaels. Uh, I'll defer to uh, Chief Martins as he's reviewed uh, several comparable bylaws from other communities. Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, to the council. So in reviewing other bylaws, yes, so it was best, best practice that the age was set at two. Um, that being said, um, because of some of the comments actually that Councillor Nelson made, but, um, they have more control over that cohort that you're in. That's why you'll see as an exemption, actually schools and other education facilities, hospitals, healthcare facilities, and other child care facilities were exempt. Uh, that gave them the flexibility to then put stricter parameters around that. Being the fact, again, back to what Councillor Nelson alluded to there was, if you're going through the community and we don't know where you're coming or going from, whereas if you're at a specific area, that can be controlled easier. So that's why we, we went with the two, which was the best practice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wall. Councillor Haas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I guess um, I guess where I'm coming from is, and I sent this all to Council, and I hope they had an opportunity, but uh, one of the exemptions, too, is, is I agree with um, Councillor Nelson in regards, but five years old is actually of an age, if they are un- 
able and, and are being resistant to wearing a mask, that that could potentially be an exemption. But that is tends to be few and far between. There are over the age of two, there are kids that are wearing those masks and actually quite compliant in my experience. And, and I do, I see it quite often. Um, so I would like to see it stay at two. Um, and I mean, if the person or the child can't, there potentially can, you know, the parents can make that judgment. Because part of the problem is if they're touching their mask and playing with it and whatever, it's more of a contamination risk than it is actually to be wearing. So I would uh, like to see, I won't be speaking in favor of this. Um, this is a protocol that doctors uh, also follow when it comes to exemptions for people and they look at two, but over two, there is no need to, unless, like I said, five years old, they just can't wear it and it's becoming a, a problematic, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. <coughs> Council. Councillor Estashi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I won't be speaking in favor of this uh, proposed amendment either, um, for the reasons that the other councillors have indicated already, but I think one of the reasons that in schools, the age is set at nine is that there needs to be some assurance that the child is old enough to be able to handle taking on and off their mask on their own independently. Whereas outside of school, uh, the child's generally gonna be with their cohort group and they will have a cohort member who can, or family member who can help them with their masks. So um, I don't think two is an unreasonable age to consider, uh, considering outside of school, they'll likely be with a parent or guardian who's able to assist them if they need. So again, I won't be speaking in favor of the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. For myself, in principle, I like the idea of extending the age past two, nine. Uh, for consistency's purpose, I see the, the rationale that there'd be some uh, equal equal playing field, although Gerard Redmond did uh, implement uh, a different age. They go JK and up. I think it's four years old and up. So it's a little bit already inconsistent. Um, I, If this is defeated, which I sense that it will be, I, I do support an age of five years old. Uh, talking to other parents and experiencing it for myself for enforcement, I have one two-year-old who just will not wear it. So to be able to, to issue fines and enforce another individual while they see another child at the age of 24 months in one day, not wearing it creates problems. I just think 20, that, that is such a young age. Um, and, and they're at a different level and we're talking about, uh, you know, specklets or, or when you're speaking. So uh, I don't, I won't support nine. I think it's a, I, we're, we're kind of hearing what's going on around the table, but I, I do believe two is, is quite low. Uh, Councilor McGoon. Just a point of clarification, Your Worship, not looking for any kind of debate. I believe in our earlier conversation, you had mentioned St. Gregory's. Oh. You, yeah, you said oh, Gerard. My, my apologies, St. Gregory's ha has implemented my, yeah, my apologies. Uh, Councilor Nelson. I would like to propose an amendment to the amendment that the age read. Sorry, if you can bring it up. Uh, I just want to make sure I have the wording correct. So the age read under five years of age. Mr. Chair, uh, I'd be willing to accept that as a friendly amendment given the political realities of the table. Councillor Nelson, uh, is that okay to be a friendly amendment? It's fine with the original amender and the chair. I'm fine with that. Okay. Thank you. And did you want to speak to that, Councillor Nelson? Uh, I. You know, the, the reality of, of kids, I think, too, is pretty tough. And ultimately, I, I want to see a higher buy-in and less and fewer barriers for entry. Uh, and I think this gives us that opportunity. And, and keep in mind, we've got opportunities every pretty regularly to amend this um, as we figure out how it fits and how it works. So uh, barrier for entry is key to me. And, and this is something that I can go back to citizens and say it's pretty realistic. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Haas. Yeah, I, I I will support the age of under the age of five. Uh, I do believe that parents, some parents that for children that are will continue to mask them, even though they may be here, I think, and the ones that comply. But I, I do think it also helps for those parents that do have such, you know, that, that we're not we're not making more problems for them, you know, in the long run. So I think it's reasonable uh, that you know, under the age of five that they wear a mask for sure. I will say though that there are some pretty cool kid masks out there they love to wear. So I think we won't have much of a problem for some of them. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. I'll be speaking in favor of this and speaking to administration of St. Gregory in recent days. Uh, they've had uh, virtually no issues with four and five year olds 
wearing them. It's been very, you know, great success. So for anyone who's concerned concerned of that age, we have a trial, essentially a trial in our community that's that's working mm -hmm. for kids of, of five, uh, five and six. So uh, for me, that's uh, some good anecdotal evidence, and uh, I'll support this. Thank you, Councillor Race. I too will support five years of age. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Council, we have an amendment on the floor that reads um, changing 411 to the age of five and under. Anything further on the amendment? And seeing none, I'll call the question that section 4.1.1 read persons under five years of age. All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Council, any other amendments? Yeah, Councillor Haas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't necessarily have a proposed amendment at this point. I'd like to get some input, but I do have a concern with Section 8. Um, and, and most of it, or the, the major concern I have is not with 8.1, but it's 8.1.2. Um, I, I just feel the wording is not very clear on the length of time and, and the process after once enacted. Um, you know, I, I think if we could work on the wording a little bit uh, to... Um, what is the process? So how long is it going to be in place? And then what happens after that and stuff? So I, I, I do have potentially, I guess, uh, uh, bear with me for one second here. Um, sorry, my apologies. I should have had this up. <coughs> My apologies, um, but I'd like to see is is it amended to um, <clears throat> this bylaw uh, will be uh, reviewed. Um, sorry, I had it in my head and now it's gone. So I, I, I think I'm sensing what you're saying, if I may. So, yeah. Um, this bylaw would be reviewed at the first regular meeting of council and the third standing committee meeting or second standing committee meeting um each month right and then it would be reassessed at that time if i may to show that we, in every two weeks we'll be reassessing once enacted and then making a determination after that so it's to me that what it's stating right now is it seems <coughs> like if it goes below 10 then we're immediately going to uh Re disenact, disengage it, but I think it needs to be clear that how long is this going to be engaged for, when will it be reviewed, and what's the process afterwards, because maybe the numbers are climbing and we decide that we want to keep it uh, for whatever reason, but that's the decision of uh, EAC. So for uh, clarity's sake, would you did you want to put uh, for that amendment to 8.1.2 to say this bylaw is uh, will be reviewed for, at the first regular council and the second standing committee meeting. Correct. And we can deal with the other part after. Yes, please. Is that, yes. Wendy, if we can uh, get that on the board, please. Could you repeat this? Then it will be reviewed uh, every first regular and second regular, correct? Sandy. Sandy. Sorry, Sandy. Of each month. And then we would still keep in the last care of the, the last sentence at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll just wait for that to come up on the board and then I'll go to Councillor Nelson. Okay. Councillor Haas, are you okay with that? <clears throat> Yes. Okay. Perfect. Councillor Nelson. So uh, I'll leave it up to the chair and the mover to determine whether it's a friendly amendment or if it needs to be voted on. Uh, but I think it should stay the first Tuesday and third Tuesday of each month at a meeting of council or a special meeting of council. Um, we may change what a meeting is. Um, if it comes to standing, we can't change the bylaw at a standing committee meeting which would mean we'd have to call a special meeting, which would then be contrary to the bylaw. And the reason we need to put council meeting or special meeting is because in our council procedural bylaws, we've been learning uh, special meeting isn't under the council meeting definition. 
Uh, so really the intent is that we review it every first Tuesday and third Tuesday. Um, I would be okay with that as a friendly amendment because it doesn't change the concept or the, Correct. the core of it. It just specifies, I think, so Councillor Haas, would you be okay with that? I would be. I, I guess if I may, uh, I, I think I uh, can capture it in, and I think all of it, but once enacted, the bylaw will remain in effect and will be reassessed every two weeks through the AC, at which time a recommendation is rescinded, may be made to council for a decision at a regular council meeting or a special meeting of council. But I would like to see the, the first Tuesday and third Tuesday uh, instead of the uh, regular meet council meeting and special meeting of council. So, Wendy, sorry, I, I'd like to, uh, if I may. Uh, yeah, is so to word it as once enacted, we're going to start from the beginning there, if I may. Okay. So, once enacted, the bylaw will remain in effect and will be reassessed every two weeks through the EAC, at which time a record, oh, at which time a recommendation to rescind may be made to council for decision every first Tuesday or third Tuesday and third Tuesday sorry, of the month but of council or by council. Yeah, if I may, that works. And if I may speak to it. I just think it's clearer as to it will that no matter what the numbers or whatever, it's once it's enacted, once we have the 10 or we're enhanced, it will remain in effect until for two weeks, then we'll be reassessed at that time and either rescinded at that time, it'll, but it'll be reassessed. So it's clear and it, won't, it doesn't involve necessarily numbers per se, but it's in the, after two weeks of enactment, whether it's gonna continue or not. And I feel it, I personally think that's clearer to the general public than the, pre the previous wording. Councillor Nelson and Councillor Stasher. Yeah, so I, I won't speak in favor of this because this means we're having four meetings a week to discuss this okay. bylaw um, because EAC is reassessing every two weeks and I'm making a recommendation at which point council can um, rescind. I also don't like the, the term rescind being in there because we really want to review it. It might be enhancing, okay. it might be, re be reducing, it, it might make a lot of different things. So. Um, I, I don't want to meet four times a month on this. I actually don't particularly want EAC to review it unless they really have to, because I like the transparency of it happening um, at council meetings and standing committee meetings. It's live streamed, people have access to it. So simplicity, transparency, uh, and this is just too many meetings um, for, for me to discuss something that um, I, I don't see us four times a month having enough new information to change it. So thank you. Thank you. Before you go to Councillor Stash, uh, go back to Councillor Hawes, it seems that- Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, you know, in the wording that does make four meetings and I thank Councillor Nelson for that. So I think that it you know, reassessed every two weeks, um, not through the EAC, but by council, and at which time recommendations to either rescind or continue or enhance, You might as well put all three in there, depending on what the circumstances are, either to can you hands be made uh, by council every two, first Tuesday and third Tuesday of the month of council. Your decision is out. Uh, council for decision. No, we can okay. put that in. Okay. And I'm reasonably. I know we're re -smith, we're smithing this, but I want to make sure we're getting and I'm, I'm you know open to amendments and everything. I just feel it wasn't as clear. Uh, I wanted to. Uh, the the only the only thing just for point of clarification, I feel there's potential contradictions in okay. every two weeks because the third meeting and sometimes you have a third week, right? The fifth Tuesday. 
Uh, I, I just don't see the purpose of having that whole first part in, and just having the pointing out that it's going to be the first and the third okay. Tuesdays. That that's just my thought. I think it kind of like it'll contradict itself, and then we'd have to create a meeting because there'll be a three week gap between the third and the first the next Fair month. Enough. Yep. Yeah, you can take the two weeks out and then just go with that. We'll start there. Then the rest of the council, please, by all means. Thank you, Councilor Oz. Thank you for your patience, Councilor Sashik. Floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just first of all, that wording is extremely awkward, and it needs to be worked on. Okay. Uh, my point, though, is not that so much. It's more to Councilor Nelson's point of actions that could be taken when is when this is reviewed on the first and third Tuesdays of each month. And my, I guess my question would be to administration mm -hmm. that. If the situation were to warrant potentially suspending the the bylaw, but not necessarily rescinding it in the event that uh, that cases case counts do start to climb again, I wouldn't want to have to start the bylaw process all over again. So I'm, I guess I'm wondering if it's possible to suspend in a, uh, enforcement or suspend the bylaw for a period of time until further action where it can be re reestablished. CEO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, I'll defer to um, Chief Martins on this. He's reviewed the language in several other bylaws. Um, a suspension of a bylaw is not something that I'm familiar with, um, but administration could, uh, through a break, look into that and, and find out whether that's possible. But um, Chief Martins, was there any language like that in other bylaws you reviewed? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through Council. Um, actually, there, there wasn't a lot of language around when even Council came back to meet. Um, a lot of the other communities use their EAC committee um, through legislation, that's what it's for. Um, and then the recommendation came forward as far as rescinding a bylaw. It, from what I know, um, it's got to be at a, at a regular, um, and it would need to be by um, council to rescind. Thank you, uh, Chief Martins. Uh, Councillor Stasha, anything? Um, no, no, not particularly. I, obviously, I'm not particularly happy with that answer, though. Um, if we get to a point at some at some time in the future where we're, you know, down to two or one or even zero active cases in the community, but that's still a thing that's out there, and council feels it's not it, it's it's not prudent to be you know continuing to enforce a, a mask bylaw when there's you know that low a number of active cases and but there isn't a will to go ahead and completely repeal the bylaw in case for some reason case counts start to climb again because that would mean the bylaw process would have to start anew to get it to get it um re-established so if that's the only way to do it then i guess i'm okay with that but i would prefer something that's a little a, a little easier to work with thank you councillor stashik uh ceo olson alluded to looking into this potentially could we park this momentarily uh and maybe with Le uh, sandra with legislation looking at that concept how what happens can we put mechanisms in there to suspend pause it take away like kind of address the issues that councillor stashik brought up um that doesn't stop us from uh, i think there's other potential um things that we can work on on this motion that I've been hearing around the table. Councillor Reese. Okay, just quickly, if we could have had a, a bylaw in waiting, and we could have, could we not put this bylaw into a waiting category? Or just something to think about. Thank you, Councillor Reese. Uh, Councillor Wah. I, I feel like we may be overthinking this a little bit. Uh, it says right in the enactment 8.1, of provisions of this bylaw may only be enacted by the town manager when there's certain levels that are reached. So would we, it would be up for review. I think we just need to keep it simple for today. Let's get this thing enacted. We can have, when it's back for review in two weeks, we can have administration come back with some recommendations on how it's finagled if we need to suspend, renew, whatever, but I think uh, for now, uh, we know that this gives us the, what we need to get something in place if, if needed. So, and 
I would say the same thing with the amendment. I think we're trying to overthink it and try to address every possible scenario where I think, uh, quite frankly, Councillor Nelson's, or uh, Ms. Anderson, would you be able to scroll? Is there another submission from Councillor Nelson? Oh, no. I think that for simplicity's sake is really all we need for today. I, I think that really addresses <coughs> what we need for this bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watt. Uh, Councillor Stashi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that was going to be my suggestion to following up. This isn't something that needs to get addressed today, and I don't mm -hmm. want my concerns for for how this can be suspended or, or placed on hold at some point in the future to hold that decision on this bylaw. So I'm perfectly happy, you know, proceeding with uh, uh, pr proceeding with the decision on this bylaw today, and having administration <laughs> come back at one of the reviews at some point in the future with some information on options for for how it could be suspended or or if it would need to be repealed. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Stafford. Okay, Council, we do still have a motion on the floor. Uh, anything further regarding this? Oh, Councillor Nelson. Yeah, so as it, as it sounds, I won't be supporting it. I think it is just too complicated. Um, even some of the wording where it says first and third Tuesday of the month by council, that means it can't be done by committee, can't be done by EAC, can't happen at a standing committee meeting. I think if, if we just keep it simple, you know, ultimately I'm happy to vote this one down and then move on to kind of the friendly note that I kind of made earlier that just clarifies that first and third Tuesday so that we're not uh, forced to have a meeting uh, to discuss this and we don't have a regularly scheduled meeting. So uh, again, simplicity is great. And if there's directions to send administration away with on anything else that isn't urgent, uh, I think it'd be great. We can review it in two weeks or four weeks or whatever it is. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nelson. Okay, Council, we have a motion on the floor. Um, I'll call to question all those in favor. All those opposed. Yeah. That's Thank carried, you. Carried unanimously. And Council, Councillor Nelson. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll uh, make a motion that Council amend bylaw number 1151, section 8.1.2 be reviewed every first and, sorry, every first and third Tuesday. Yeah. Of each month at a council meeting or special meeting of council. And all that simply means is the first Tuesday, third Tuesday with whatever body is meeting that day, whether it's uh, council, standing committee, um, potentially part of an EAC meeting, uh, we're good to go without adding uh, additional meetings uh, that are uh, not already scheduled. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Haas and Councillor Stasher. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, I thank you, Council, for the discussion. I just, I think this is clear on when it will be discussed and 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 when it will be uh, reviewed. So I appreciate that. I just felt it wasn't uh, as clear. So thank you for the simplicity in the conversation. Uh, sometimes I complicate things more than it needs to be. So thank you. Thank so. you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Stasher. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I just need a little clarification on the terminology regarding the special meeting of council. Uh, generally, the third Tuesday of the month is a standing committee meeting. So does that mean that there will just automatically be a special meeting of council scheduled for every third Tuesday of the month? Thank you, Councillor Stachy. I'll go to Councillor Nelson to clarify his, his intent. Yeah, this actually stems largely from our council procedural bylaw uh, update committee. If at some point we determine we need to make decisions on that third Tuesday um, and decide to call uh, cancel a standing committee meeting and call a special uh, meeting of council instead, it just allows us to still do uh, the COVID bylaw or mask bylaw if that meeting is changed from a standing to a special. So I can follow up then. Yes. Okay. So thank you for that clarification. I do have some concerns then if that's the clarification, because we generally have a standing committee meeting that's scheduled for the third Tuesday already. So canceling that in favor of scheduling a special meeting of council to potentially discuss some changes to, to the mass bylaw, I don't necessarily think I would be in favor of, but I wouldn't have a problem with just there being a special meeting of council every third Tuesday, say before the standing committee meeting, 
there's no extra meeting fees or anything anymore since our since our all our meeting fees are now concurrent it doesn't uh, it doesn't change any payment for 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 fees meeting fees or anything but because it would be a stand or like a regularly scheduled special meeting of council if there was some action that council wanted to take at that meeting they could because it's a special meeting and not a standing committee meeting so i'm not sure logistically what the best way to approach that is but that's my concerns anyway thank you councillor stashik councillor nelson yeah i think like this allows that to happen and if it's agenda prep or a request from council to have it be a special meeting because we want to take action i think with this we're still able to um, it doesn't limit us but it also doesn't force us to call a special meeting if you know if nothing changes we're still in 12 cases and, and we don't look like we want to take action on it we just want to discuss it um but i would also be against um against the subsequent motion or even amendment that requires it to be a special meeting on that third tuesday either like but agenda prep can and the mayor can just take care of that too if if we want to so Thank you, Councillor Nelson. I, uh, for clarification, I think a uh, meeting of council, you mean it could come to a standing. I want to clarify that to, to the group because there could be some misunderstanding that council means a regular or standing, correct? Councillor yeah, Nelson? Correct. Okay. So this under this would still come at a standing committee meeting or a special. So then if we wanted to create a special because we anticipate potential change, we can make a special but under the wording, this insinuates that it's regular or standing. So this will be coming to the standing committee meeting under this direction. Councilor Nelson. Yeah, but doesn't limit a special right. meeting also. Okay. If, if, if you or council or whoever else prefers right. that it be a special, that still allows it to happen. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, with, with that being said, uh, I have, uh, I'll be in support of this. So this will be coming to the first regular council. It'll be coming to the second standing committee meeting it could also come to a special meeting we'd have to call that special meeting in conjunction uh and yeah thank you for the dialogue now i think there's some clarity that uh, this doesn't omit it from coming to a standing committee meeting which would be unless we do something otherwise okay councillor Stashik. thank you mr mayor um, yeah i too appreciate the clarity and the understanding of what's happening here but i do still have concerns so if there's a review at a standing committee meeting of council and something emergent comes through that discussion and review that council wants to take action on the count, there either has to be a, a, a special meeting scheduled at that point or wait until the next regular meeting. So I think if this is something we want to review on a regular basis to potentially make changes to it, that there should probably be a scheduled standing or a scheduled special meeting of council for every third Tuesday of the month. So if if it's the will of council to make some changes to the bylaw at that point, they can not not having to schedule a different meeting or or uh, wait for the next regular. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Um, before I go to Councillor Nelson, so we have really if if there's an appetite for that, we could choose to put this within this bylaw, or the other approach uh, uh, ultimately is. Uh, in informing me when there's an appetite to call this special meeting and putting it. So do we want it formally within this bylaw? That, and, and do we put a time limit on, on scheduling special meetings for the foreseeable future? That's sort of the question, because because I think I agree with Councillor Stash, it will be more than likely a time where it happens to come on the second standing committee meeting and we'll want to do changes and we won't be allowed without that meeting. So. We'll, we'll see where the appetite of council is uh, regarding that. Councillor Nelson. I'd like to propose an amendment. Uh, and really simply, uh, a regular meeting of council or a special meeting of council. If I could speak to the amendment, I, I really appreciate what Councillor Sash said. You know, again, this stems a little bit from having one less regular month. And if we get to a point where we're ready to cancel this bylaw um, and, and put it off to the side for a bit, I don't want to wait a month. And I really don't want to call an unscheduled special meeting because that incurs meeting fees and I think also reduces transparency. Um, I don't know if it needs to be in the bylaw, but I would also appreciate that that stand or special meeting is the first uh, order of business at four o'clock each of those Tuesdays so that the public knows to tune in um, and, and just has some certainty and, and same for the regular meetings. I would love for it to be the first agenda item, 
uh, maybe after delegations, but I think as often as we can, you know, having certainty to citizens when it's going to take place. As far as the time limit on it, I, I think we do it until it is rescinded. And once it's rescinded, we're obviously not meeting on the first and third Tuesday because the bylaw no longer exists. And if we implement it again, then it goes back to the same thing, first and third Tuesday. So um, that I think it's great. Thank you, Councillor Stasek. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. We have an amendment on the floor, so if you could speak to the amendment. Councillor McGoon and Councillor Race. Yeah, just in short, uh, I support the amendment and the how it will affect the main motion. And I appreciate the conversation on all parts. Thank you, Councilor McGoon. Councilor Race. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just an observation. A um, mover cannot, my understanding, cannot make an amendment to his main motion, but can make a second amendment. So, um, I'll go to administration. It was my understanding that um, you could amend your own motion, I believe, but I'll go to administration for that one. Thank you very much. Councillor if I, if I have many ways, while CNA also looks that up, it, I, I believe Councillor Race is correct. I'm not speaking on, on behalf of administration, though. I believe she is correct in that uh, a mover can't amend their own motion, but they can change their motion as long as there's no opposition from the rest of council. I believe. I'm happy to entertain any of those bats. <laughs> so, for the sake of simplicity, if, if Councillor Nelson, would you like to just uh, uh, change your motion, uh, your your original motion, without an amendment? If council if council is amenable to that, I would be happy with that. We just need to put regular in front of that first meeting one. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Nelson, you're good with those changes. Council, any objection? You. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? <laughs> okay, seeing none, I'll call to question that Council amend bylaw 1151 section 8.1.2 be reviewed every first and third Tuesday of each month at a regular meeting of Council or a special meeting of Council. All those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Uh, thank you, Council, for that uh, dialogue uh, that worked out very good at the end. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have an amendment, I do have a question for administration. And this is page four of seven, 5.3 municipal tag. So 5.3.1, a peace officer is hereby authorized to issue a municipal tag to any person who the peace officer believes has contravened any provision of this bylaw. Is that they've seen it themselves, somebody not wearing a mask or a report comes in. So what does it mean? believes it has been contravened. Our Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through the council. So that standard language across everybody's bylaws. Um, so obviously uh, the peace officer has authority based on what's in the bylaw um, to go out and do that enforcement. Um, when we receive any type of complaint, obviously there's a piece of investigation that goes with that. Um, the officer would, would attend the area or the scene or whatever it might be and whether that's an education piece um, that they, they lead with first, uh, might be a medical reason, and find out the situation before running to the fines. I will tell you, I have spoken to our staff sergeant as well as the peace officers and, and from our side of the table, uh, it, it will be the education piece uh, first. Uh, we're, we're not trying to play fines and run up there and do that. We're trying to simply get people to wear a mask. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Race. Council, Councilor Watt. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I have a question uh, just to clarify something in the enactment part of it. Uh, under 8.1, it says provisions of this bylaw may only be enacted by the town manager when there are more than 10 ca active cases. Should that read 10 or more? Because don't we reach designation, designation at 10? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, That is correct, and that's a good catch. Um, we used to uh, move into enhanced status at 10 cases. Okay, so I'd like to propose an amendment, please. 
uh, 8.1 read when there are 10 or more active cases of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Wild, for catching that. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any any debate? I'll call to question. All those in favor? <laughs> It's passed unanimously. Council. Anything further? <laughs> Councillor Haas. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, give second reading of temporary mandatory mask and face coverings bylaw number 1151 as amended. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Oh. Point of oh, oh order. sorry. Pardon? What, oh, sorry. What is the point of order? Uh, just the, the reading. There we go. Yeah, oh, we're good. Oh, good. Thank you. And Councillor House, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, I think uh, I, I appreciate the conversation <laughs> and the uh, amendments that were made. Uh, I think, you know, in a short period of time and brought together a, a, a bylaw that I think is very clear and I think it's going to be. Uh, well received by majority of the of the community as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, Council, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, Councillor McGoon. Yeah, just two points where I heard concerns uh, from various citizens, both when this was first discussed in August and now. And I think it's important <laughs> to understand that those concerns are first heard, uh, but second also considered. Um, the first was around, uh, I had heard a couple of citizens echo concerns that well, I've never seen a bylaw put in a place that gets repealed. That's not true. Uh, just a sheer simple fact, and you can go through town records, is that the business of the town requires us to repeal bylaws all the time. This is a normal part of doing business. So where a citizen has that concern, I want to assure citizens that council does, can and will repeal these sorts of bylaws as necessary. Uh, the second was there was concerns around, you know, sort of the legalities of this and where this fits in, we've certainly referenced not only other municipalities bylaws and how they fit within uh, all necessary legal frameworks. We've also, as a municipality, consulted our own legal representation to make sure that everything fits within the accordance of all legal structures, provincial, federal, municipal. Thank you. Thank you, Council McGoo. Council, uh, we have a motion on the floor. Anything further? And seeing none, I'll call the question that council gives second reading of the temporary mandatory mask and face coverings bylaw 1151 as amended. Council, all those in favor, that's passed unanimously. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that council give unanimous consent for third reading of temporary mandatory mask and face covering bylaw number 1151. And just briefly, I'll speak to it. Uh, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing out there is people want to be right. I don't need to be right. I just need to do what's right today. And to me, it is passing this bylaw. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Reese. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Nelson. I'd like to speak to unanimous consent. This is something I take extremely serious and I've voted against a couple times in the past and it's never easy to vote against unanimous consent, but a lot of it comes around the ability for public engagement and transparency when it comes to unanimous consent. Why this is different for me is I've been having the mass conversation with citizens for six months. Um, we had an opportunity to pass a bylaw, I don't know, 10 weeks ago, eight weeks ago, and we were patient. At that time, I, I felt like I needed more communication and, and a better understanding and just a better feel for the community that's out with it. And you know, this is something where I'm absolutely happy to give uh, unanimous consent or vote in favor of unanimous consent because I think this is important and I think it's the right time. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, I do have one question just for clarification. Under 4.1.8, a person uh, with medical condition, including breathing or cognitive uh, difficulties, 
or disability that prevents them from safely wearing a face mask. I guess for administration or, the, uh, or perhaps the fire chief um, regarding um, any parameters around that and uh, how do we distinguish compared to uh, what will be the decision making factors regarding that? CEO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, I will defer to Chief Martins. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, again, this is where the peace officers are, are going to err on the side of caution. Um, if someone says they have a medical reason, they, they will be asked um, from our peace officers um, what that could be and whether that person wants to tell them or not. Um, some of the things that we have still in place, we, we still are able to, if someone refuses and does not want to listen, there's lots of things that peace officers have in their authority to deal with that situation. Um, we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to, to the person that says they have that medical condition. Um, if you do have a medical condition, we encourage all people to ask their doctor for a note. And, and, and it's a quick show to, to our peace officers, and some doctors are gladly willing to write that for people that truly do have a medical condition. Um, for others, uh, it'll be a case by case. It really will be. So it will not just be a tip. Thank you, uh, Fire Chief Martin. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Haas. Yeah, and on that note about the note, I know there's been some concern. Notes are not about saying what you have. The note is to confirm Correct. that I have permission. So when you look at, for example, there are many people that might, and, and you know, medical marijuana, for example, there is no need. They have a card. They have the right to use medical marijuana. There is no sharing of why they have it. Questioning that, they have that note. If you have a seeing eye dog, or, or sorry, a service dog, uh, service dogs are. It's not required to know why you have a service dog, what the reason for it is, what your condition is. It's you have you know, the right to have a service dog. So it's not about questioning. And so a dog, there's no, in this case, is not going to say why. It's going to say that they are unable to or whatever or stating it. So I think it's important that we do, uh, you know, because there is some legitimate reasons, even though though there are very few. But I think, and doctors are more than happy to, if needed, uh, you know, make that exemption and make that known. So I think that, to be clear, it, we're not asking anybody why. We're just clearly stating that it's helpful to know that you can't, and that's that's fair, I believe. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hollis. I'll be speaking in favor um, of this motion for, uh, for unanimous consent, and as Councillor Nelson alluded to, I generally don't like that, and I think most of us on Council believe that too, uh, but this is, uh, I think, a peculiar situation. Um, first, I, I do want to thank uh, those who are, who are against this bylaw. 99.9% of people have been very respectful. Uh, it's been some good dialogue, um, much better than I anticipated. I do wanna thank uh, the people who are in favor of this bylaw for their patience. Uh, and I believe there's no perfect science, but many things have changed from a few months ago, including we're the only province in Canada who does not have a form of a mandatory mass bylaw. Uh, that doesn't mean a, pro a municipality should do it, but it's indicative of something that's going on throughout our country uh, as a whole. Um, I don't want this bylaw in place forever. Uh, it's, you know, it has temporary in the title. I do want to communicate to people that uh, I feel that we've made some good changes. 4.1.8 is a big part of it. I was really happy to see that in there. Uh, I, somebody who cannot wear the mask, I, under, like, I, I want to respect that. And, and, and there are people who have breathing uh, issues that shouldn't be wearing a mask, right? Like, changing the age earlier. There are many things in here, I think, that are very good. And we, we heard our fire chief, uh, Todd Martins, talk about uh, the enforcement of it. This is this is a bylaw that's gonna work for this community. We have compassionate people that work for this community. Uh, I think this is a great compromise overall that takes all aspects into account. And I think uh, it's time for us to, to come to the table. The ICU beds are limited. We heard the premier uh, speak not too long ago that major changes could be coming down the road. So I didn't support this before uh, a few months ago, but now uh, I'd rather a slowdown than a lockdown. I hear that saying uh, the last thing any business owner needs, any resident needs is a, is a lockdown. If Even if this helps in the smallest amount, that I, I, although hard to quantify, that is good enough to try this for a while. And I'll be the first person to apologize if 
we I ever find out that there's something greater and this is some form of conspiracy, I'll be the first person to apologize. And I mean that seriously, uh, because they're, they're, I understand why people don't trust governments. There are a lot of bad politicians out there. I get that. I, I truly believe that. So I know there's caution out there, but we are not bad. I, 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 know, I know that. And, and I think this policy or this bylaw in front of us is indicative of everyone's input in our community. So I do want to thank everyone, including administration. Uh, and I stand firmly behind this bylaw uh, for the time being. And I look forward to uh, going through the next uh, few weeks and seeing where this uh, rolls out to. Thank you. Council, anything further? Seeing none, I'll call to question that council give unanimous consent for third reading of temporary mandatory mask and face coverings by law 1151. All those in favor, that's unanimous. And council race. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Quick question to admin. Will um, by law, will they be handing out masks? You know, should someone not have one, would there be masks available? See you also. Uh, thank you all to bring Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through the council. Um, we don't have an endless supply of masks. Uh, um, however, I have asked um, the peace officers uh, and even all of our fire trucks, do we have masks in there? And, and should, should someone from outside of our community not be aware, um, they're more than willing to say, here, put this on and continue to take a date. So they will be in the vehicles, they will hand them out um, if someone does need them. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Race. <laughs> Council, I'll entertain you. Uh, Councillor Ostashi. Mayor Michaels, I'd like to move the Council give third reading of temporary mandatory mask and face coverings bylaw number 1151. <coughs> I'd like to speak to it quickly. I think it's, it's a shame that the discussion around masking has become such a politicized um, discussion. I'm not going to talk about my frustration with other levels of sub government and how I think that this should have been handled rather than having municipalities have to deal with. But I will say that I am fully in support of passing this bylaw today. I believe it's, it's important based on the best science that we've got, best credible science that we've got available to us at this point, and advice from our medical experts that this is one way and a host of ways that citizens can use to help suppress the spread of COVID to help protect our citizens and our health care system. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostasha. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Wall. Uh, just before voting, I wanted to ask a, a, a quick question of admin. How will this be implemented? Uh, will this be immediate uh, tomorrow morning, just to give the public an idea of what they can expect? Thank you. C.O. Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. So under enactment, um, the this bylaw uh, can be enacted by the town manager when there are 10 or more cases as we've reviewed, um, or we enter into that enhanced region classification. The effective date of this bylaw comes into effect the day that it's passed, which is today. The intention is that uh, it will be enacted, or it will be, uh, sorry, yes, enacted uh, by myself for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you. If I could speak to the motion, Ms. Mayor. Yeah, I, I want to also thank everyone that's reached out uh, in the last few days uh, with, on both sides of this debate. Uh, and I will echo what uh, Mayor Michael said. It was uh, surprisingly respectful, uh, considering how passionate people feel on both sides of this issue. Uh, ultimately, to me, uh, speaking to frontline workers and local doctors, that is ultimately uh, where I'm putting my faith in casting my vote tonight. And uh, I will be speaking in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wall. <coughs> Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? And seeing none, I'll call to question that Council give third reading of temporary mandatory mask and face covering bylaw 1151. All those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Council, anything further for this item? And if not, Councillor Nelson. Move that we adjourn the special meeting. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? And that's passed unanimously. We will be in.